All right, hello, wine drinking people. Today is Saturday, the 28th of January, and uh, we've started out this year another breakneck pace for tastings. We've got four events coming up next week, and I'm so excited about the Madeira tasting. I decided we need to get this, what I drank yesterday, out the very next day. And uh, while this is still fresh in my mind, although it did take copious notes, as I mentioned before, the Madeira tasting is one that I look forward to all year round as some of these uh, very old wines even though they are very ancient, well, they've been making wine in Burgundy for over a thousand years. They've been making wine in Rome and Greece and parts of the Middle East for thousands of years. So it doesn't make this wine sound of uh, Madeira really sound that ancient. But uh, Madeira is an island off the coast of Morocco, North Africa. And when Charles II decided that all the goods coming from continental Europe would be taxed, well, the colonists soon found the beverage of Madeira and fell in love with it. And, uh, well, the rest is history. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Betsy Ross, and, yes, the promiscuous Ben Franklin also had stashes of Madeira in their collections, uh, one of the favorite drinks back then. And uh, this has kind of fallen off. Well, it fell off because of Phylloxera. The island was devastated. And uh, also the taste of all the American people had changed. And today these ancient wines of Madeira, uh, well, you know, we weren't the first people to start drinking these wines. William Shakespeare, the famous poet in the 15th century, talked about these wines. As a matter of fact, Poins, uh, the Prince of Wales, is accused of having sold his soul for a glass of Malmsey and a chicken leg. And one of John Falstaff's drinking friends was named after his Malmsey, rosy, red and colored nose. And uh, while the wines of Madeira were not fortified at that time, it wasn't until the 1700s that the wines uh, really have become what they are today, fortified wines. There's different varietals, Circeal and Verdejo being the driest. And uh, while the concept of keeping these wine in casks doesn't exist anymore either, I should mention, because, you know, 100 years in casks just doesn't make economic sense today. And uh, today, 25 years is about as long as these wines spend in cask. And all I can say is thank God these economic geniuses did not exist couple hundred years ago because we wouldn't have these wines today and uh, I realize every year when I do this tasting these dinosaurs this may be the last time we get to enjoy one of these wines so uh, well you know most people consider Madeira a dessert wine but I can tell you that Circeo and Verdejo uh, those are drier styles about 1.5 grams of residual sugar so uh, about the same amount of sugar in Brut Champagne so not very sweet at all and uh, these things work lovely the first two wines with uh, the first course that Tony put out this tuna with this spice curry sauce with a date chutney and toasted cashew nuts wow lovely accompaniment to these drier styles of Madeira sweet and tangy nature of that chutney really played really well with the Madeira and then uh, the spiced carrots all spice scented carrots with honey and uh, orange zest also added to the experience of these two wines the Gordon Cossart Circial Solera Solera indicates that uh, this is a wine that it's a blended wine so 1860 is the oldest wine in the cast the youngest wine is probably from 1910 to 1920 this wine probably barrel bottled in around the 40s or 50s and uh, an incredible bouquet coming off of this wine fresh ground coffee on the nose with notes of dark fig uh, fudge and a date cake and allspice and toffee really wonderful complexity shown here a bit tart on the palate we first opened this wine up I decanter all the wines two days ago except for the old dogs the 1860 and 1795 I opened those up several hours before the tasting yesterday and I have to say they really opened up in those few hours uh, really mellowed out and that tartness uh, kind of went away a little bit but this is pretty typical of these uh, uh, Circeals they do have a little bitterness on the finish some lovely lemon zestiness showing wonderful freshness for such an old dog most excellent juice. Next up, the 26 Barbieto Verdejo, and this is just a little bit less uh, kind of bitter uh, and, uh, than the Circeal, but um, really nice host of brown spices, cinnamon and clove with notes of orange peel, a slight musky note, uh, and a grapefruit like uh, citrus showing on the nose there. Sweet and tangy on the tongue with wonderful freshness, and that nuttiness shining through on the finish. A really excellent bottle of uh, Verdejo, the 1927 Leacox Bestardo. Uh, these are all vintage Madeiras. The only Solera we had was the very first one. Vintage Madeira means the grapes come from all one year, of course. Bastardo, one of the few black grapes uh, on the island, is very rare. An intoxicating nose here of brown spices, dried tobacco, uh, dark fudge, cashew nuts. Kind of an, an antiseptic floral note showing there as well. Sweet and very tangy on the tongue with hints of dark fudge, brown spice, and a slight briny note to this wine. Most excellent, the Bastardo 27 from Leacox. And then the old dog, the 1795 Barbieto Tarantes, one of the rarest of all the grape varieties. 
varietals grown on the island. And uh, Tarantes to me is kind of in between, uh, you know, Verdejo and Moms or Bual. Not quite as sweet as the Bual and Momsy style, but not as dry as the Verdejo or Circial. And uh, this wine was really beautiful on the nose. Uh, Volatile aromas of toffee, allspice, dates, sun-dried raisins, incredible amount of fruit showing here as well. Lovely exotic spices. Wow, incredible freshness on the palate of this wine. And the smoothest of all the wines, probably because of the age, leaving the impression of silk on your palate. That sweet fruit still showing through. Through the finish, the dates and figs, that fudge-like character, and a fresh ground coffee. Really exotic, wonderful freshness, a little lemon zest also in this wine killer Madeira, the 1795, the wine of the night, in my opinion. All right, both the Tarantes and the Bastardo were excellent with that all-spice cured pork belly with a little maple Korean barbecue natural sauce and the dill-scented green beans. Again, the combination of that sweet and tangy along with the richness of the pork belly really worked brilliantly. All right, the 1914 Rutherford and Miles Bual. Bual, one of the sweeter styles. Very spicy and exotic on the nose here. Worked really nice with that curl, curry apple chutney uh, lemon zest and uh, white fudge. A lot of VA on the nose showing on this wine uh, when it was first opened, but uh, these wines, I saw started taking notes on them two days ago when I opened them and a little bit overbearing a cup when they first opened that brown spice and a little bit of bottle funk also which happens with these Madeiras that's why you want to open them up several days and like I said these wines we got half left in each of these bottles we're going to drink them again in March and uh, they should be even better we do this tasting twice every every year because it takes twice to sell it there was only eight people here last night so a great time was had by everybody and uh, this wine had a little bit of a beef jerky character to it too after it had been open for two days but still quite youthful and uh, I can't wait to try this wine again in March most excellent juice the Barbieto vintage Malmsey was next and uh, this wine also had a bit of bottle stank we first opened it up but lovely fudge dates kind of a walnuts and brown spice a little dried tobacco showing on this wine really nice and chewy on the tongue layers of that brown spice fudge this was the biggest of all the Madeiras and a little tar like quality to the dates and mandarin orange even uh, this wine really stood out after two days and had more of that beef jerky and smoky meat component than any of the other wines an incredible long finish this was my second favorite wine of the night and all I can say for the food is again Tony excellent job and uh, you know for these two sweet ones chocolate covered bacon folks outstanding. All right, well, that's what I had to drink yesterday. I put all the vintage Madeira that we have available in the store on this offering. For those of you that want to experience Madeira that have never tried it, I strongly urge you. Oh, hey, we've got another tasting coming up in just a few months. Check it out on our calendar of events. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.